the main thing that hit me then was anger and a promise. I, I said, who did this to you? And that I would find out who did that to him. There is no bringing these good folks back, but it is still possible to resurrect the truth, still possible to restore the rule of law, still possible to redeem the soul of a nation that very nearly lost it. Wasn't that a little bit gut-wrenching? That was a, a police detective named Jax, uh, I'm sorry, James Sanders, sometimes called Jack, uh, helped get that film produced. Did the Clinton government lie to you? Did they cover up the fact that two missiles shot down TWA flight? Absolutely. And I go on for that. Is the Bush administration lying to you? Are they going on deniability? And I look at uh, the Friday, February, uh, May 17th, uh, Santa Barbara News Press on page, uh, I don't know what page this is, the uh, A10. Listen to this statement. They're talking about whether Bush knew about 9-11 or not. Now, it's known that he did know. He had all kinds of reports coming from many sources saying something's going to happen with the airliner and not only that, they had the calendar. Now, you noticed in the news you watched last week, nobody talked about the calendar that was published in England that people had two years that showed a plane crashing into the World Trade Center. That was printed in 1999. It was the 1999 calendar. Hello, how could $30 billion spent on espionage and CIA and FBI, and they missed this calendar printed where all, lots of people had it. But listen to what they said Friday, May 17th. Neither the president nor I have any memory of learning about, unquote, the FBI information that was forwarded in July by the Bureau of Phoenix office, I mean of the FBI, headquarters here, Miss Rice said. What does that mean? They have no memory of learning about. That's what you call deniability. Same thing Clinton said, oh, I never had sex with that woman. Oh, gosh, no, I didn't have sex. I don't even know that Monica Lewin. She hangs around once in a while, brings one. I don't know anything about her. What a crock, people. Susan isn't here today. She'd keep me under control. But it's called deniability. If they can deny it and someone can't absolutely come up with a photograph and a tape and say, yes, you did, President Bush. Here's the audio tape of you discussing with Ashcroft about the airline smashing into the World Trade Center tomorrow in five days. You better be down in Florida reading books to school children. If, if you don't have that kind of evidence, it's deniable. So now they're saying, we have no memory of learning. A year from now, six months from now, when the evidence comes out, and I believe it will, and a lot sooner than Bush thinks, they will prove that President Bush, his cabinet, and key members of Congress knew about the 9-11 disaster before it happened. And you saw my show with Alex Jones. He had a pile of papers showing the evidence was there. If you watch that show with Alex Jones, that great uh, public access producer down in Texas. Anyway, I just, I just had to cover that and bring that on and, and remind you that this woman right here, Janet Reno, should be in jail, if not for taking credit for the incineration and gassing of 80 people at the Mount Carmel Church, Waco, Texas. She should be in jail for the cover-up that the FBI was ordered to do of Flight 800, where 200 and some people died. Hello, it's time to realize you can't trust your government. And that's what that good man said in the film. William Smithers, <laughs> Thanks for being patient. That's all right. We've got William Smithers, a Hollywood retired actor. He played uh, Captain Merrick on uh, For All You Trekkies on a Star Trek episode and many, many other things. 
too numerous to go through today. But he's a Green Party activist, aren't you? I am, yes. And he's got some solutions that he would think if you're not going to vote for the Democrat and Republican, they should vote for the Green, Green Party. Green Party. I would say the Libertarian Party. But he's got some things, and I want to I wanna give him some time to discuss these things. What's the first issue you got on, on your agenda here? Well, I'd like to uh, follow up a little bit on a discussion we had in our last show about instant runoff voting. Um, I think that you watching should be able to go to the polls uh, and vote and have a, a ballot uh, submitted to you whereby you can have a first choice, a second choice, third choice, fourth choice, etc., to any office that there is. Um, why should you be subjected if you are in a minor party, as the Libertarian Party is, as the Green Party is, uh, subjected to accusations that you are tossing the election, that you're being uh, a spoiler when you're voting the way that you believe, when you're using your precious vote to express your own conscience and what you believe in? You will be relieved of that fear and that accusation if you help to bring about instant runoff voting. Now, the city of San Francisco, in case you think that this should be some off-the-wall selection, some off-the-wall uh, idea, which frankly I did the first time I heard about it. I did too. But the more I have learned about it, the more I understand how sound and sensible it is. The city of San Francisco, a much more complex, a much larger city than either Santa Barbara, where I live, or Santa Maria, where we're talking now, has passed an instant runoff voting law. Now, and from now on, in San Francisco, if you vote for mayor, if you vote for their uh, board of supervisors, which is the equivalent of what we call a city council, if you vote for city attorney, you get a chance to give your first preference, your second, your third, fourth. Now, let's say, let's assume that this system of voting was in place during the last presidential election. And because I'm a Green, I'll speak, you'll forgive me for a Green point of view. Suppose that you heard Ralph Nader speak. Suppose that you had come to respect him a great deal. Suppose that you were a Democrat and had come to believe that your party and the Republican Party were both corrupted by political contributions and that you wanted to vote for this man, but that you were afraid to do it because you didn't want to throw the election to George Bush, if you did. Now, suppose you had an instant runoff voting in place. You, as a having this... Uh, the kind of thoughts that I'm talking about, would put down as your first selection, your first preference, Ralph Nader. You would have put down Al Gore as your second. You would have put down perhaps, uh, forgive me, I don't remember the name of the libertarian Harry candidate. Brown. Harry Brown. Terry Brown, third. And um, to whom it may concern, fourth. John Hagelin. Now, if that had been the case, Millions of people who had wanted to vote for Ralph Nader, and again, of course, I'm speaking as a Green and a Green sympathizer, millions more votes would have been registered for Ralph Nader. But, of course, counting all those first place ballots, he would have not have won. If the votes, if the first place votes selected a majority, uh, a candidate with a majority vote, that candidate would have won. But if not, then all those who got the least number of votes would be eliminated from the ballot. Now, let us say in this case, let us say that Ralph Nader got the least number of votes. That means that your vote would have gone to Al Gore. And the same would be true in any election. We would have a different president today if that had been in place as a national possibility in the 2000 election. Now I've just described that the city of San Francisco has instituted this form uh, of voting, and I would like to see Santa Barbara do it. I would like to see Santa Maria do it. I would like to see this start to spread around the country. 
One common interest that we in the Green Party and Libertarian Party have in common is, the, is an interest in seeing a growing proportional representation. That everything is not a winner-take-all election. But we in the Greens and those in the Libertarian Party have a legitimate chance to have a proportional representation, some representation in the government. Instant you know, runoff voting will do that. and uh, That would do that do for it. congressional candidates, right? For congressional candidates, How about for assistant? governor, for the board of supervisors. Now, I've heard a lot of talk uh, that uh, we in Santa Barbara, the southern part of the county, and that those in the north part of the county have uh, strong ideological differences. We do. We are said we to do. be more liberal in the South. Those in the North are said to be more uh, conservative. And there is a lot of talk that the northern part of the county is not satisfied with the degree of representation it gets on the Board of Supervisors. That's true. Instant runoff voting will help that situation too. But you know, I think another, th I like this concept, uh, Bill, and I would go farther. We have, you know, when we, Started this country, each congressperson represented much fewer people that actually voted than today and the population. I, I think we need to double the number of congresspeople and at the same time have uh, what I would call at large congresspeople uh, and they go to whoever didn't win an election but got a significant number of votes, like Ralph Nader. So in a state where Ralph Nader pulled 2% uh, or 3% or 5%, whoever was the Green Party candidate for Congress in that state, or the Libertarian Party candidate in that state, if it was the Libertarian that got a big chunk, would get an at-large at congressperson representative. So even if no Green won Congress, there would at least be somebody who goes to Congress and he would be at-large representing the whole state in the House but he'd represent, and only if they elected nobody. Now, if the Greens elected a congressman, then it would go to the next minor party, which might be the Libertarian Party, or it might be the Natural Law Party, or I don't know what else is there, the American Independent... Peace and uh, Freedom. Uh, oh, Peace and Freedom are gone. Are they, they, gone? they bit the <laughs> dust a couple years ago. Uh, but the American Independent Party, or someone else that didn't outright elect somebody, would get some proportion.